Who's ready for some match action? Let the games begin. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. I am Frankly FM84 and this is episode 3 of Die Rotten Bullen where we are managing Leipzig out in Germany. In the last episode, we had a transfer roundup where we bought the players that we are going to be using in the first season of the save to the club. Also showed you a little bit of the finances and also showed you the affiliate clubs that we are working with. In today's episode, we are going to go on and play our first match action as Red Bull Leipzig. So let's jump on in and have a look at how we get on. Here we go then, so a quick look at the schedule before we jump into the match footage and you can see that we have Eintrank Seller, I think that is, in the DFB Pokal first round and then we are going to play the first match of the Bundesliga today against FC Mainz. We're going to look to start the season in good form. I think we're going to need to hit the ground running here if we're going to have any chance of beating Bayern Munich. So if we head on into the first game, team selection that we are going to be putting out for the first game is Galaxy in goal, Angelino at left back, Armini and Upamecano at centre back, Mukieli at right back, Haidara, Olmo, Sabalai, Nkunku, Sabitza, and Lazaro is going to be making his debut up front. Okay, so our first game as Red Bull Leipzig manager is up and running, and we have hit the 10 minute marker without anything happening whatsoever. I would like to see a big performance from the players today, set a bit of a marker down to get the season off and running. Um, the players who have come in, I really want to see them impress. I think we signed some fantastic players. Again, I asked it at the end of the last episode whether you think maybe we signed any of them that might be duds. But uh, early on in the game here, we have a penalty whilst I'm waffling away. And Kunku is going to step up and take it. He steadies himself. And smashes it miles wide. Why we've got Nkunku on penalties, I'm not sure. That will not be happening again. <laughs> so after 19 minutes, we have let them off massively and it's still 0-0. Big goal kick there, he's played forwards. And we have dealt with a ball over the top quite well to begin with. And then we almost gave Eintracht the chance to score. But some great defending managed to get it behind for a corner. Nothing is going to come from the corner, it seems. Although Angelino finds Olmo and Sabalino is in the middle of the field. Plays it out to Sabitzer who's going to cut in from the wing. And Nkunku plays it through to Sabalai. And we have gone from one end of the field to the other to give us a lead. And that was a pretty impressive counter-attacking goal. So we've gone from one end of the field to the other. Sabitzer comes in off the wing. Plays it through to Nkunku. He lays it on for Sabalai. And he just taps it into the corner of the net. That's a brilliant finish that is. And... Quite impressed with that move on the whole. I think this season it's realistic to not think that we are going to be able to challenge Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund maybe. If we were to finish third in our first season, I think that would be a good estimation of where we are. I think we've got a few players who will develop in the future and maybe aren't 100% ready straight away. So if we can build on the players that we have and start laying foundations to build, beat Bayern Munich in the future, then hopefully we'll come good sooner rather than later. And as I'm saying that, Sabalai gets in on goal and finds the exact same bottom corner that he found for his first goal and gives us a 2-0 lead. And this now has started to look pretty simple. Got a corner that Nkunku swings in and there's Lazaro to get his debut goal. This is what the kid's about. He will score goals and he will score them frequently. The good thing about this tactic that we're playing is that he's not locked in as a forward or a striker. He's playing as a shadow striker, even though it's a strikerless system. It gives him such license to roam. You might see him pop up on the wing on either the left or the right, which is also positions that he's comfortable playing. And I think that once he gets going and gets into a rhythm, you're going to really see how much of a bargain we have in Lazaro. And providing massive clubs don't start coming in for him. I think he's a player that we are going to try and build around for the future. So in this passage of play now, we have passed the ball out wide. Angelino plays it on Kunku, plays it into Olmo, and there he is again. So he's shown two different sides of his game 
in the first game here. He has scored with his head from a corner. And then he gets involved in the build-up play. And the ball comes to Nkunku. Olmo tries the shot. It gets kind of deflected into his path. And he shows a poacher's instinct. to just tap that home. It's a fantastic finish and a fantastic debut for Lazaro. So, Eintracht kick off. And we are sitting behind the ball. But Subloy has pressed on. He's had a shot from distance. And this one goes straight to the goalkeeper. I think uh, we might make some changes here. We're pretty comfortable at 4-0. We're going to bring on Emil Forsberg on the left. We're going to bring on Tyler Adams, who is a really good American youngster in central midfield. And I think Lazaro's game is done. We are going to give Paulson a chance and maybe try and hit them with the ball over the top. I've just seen, I'm not sure how I've managed to do it. We have scored a fifth goal and Sabalai has now got a hat-trick. Uh, yeah, somehow Lazaro has been assigned the number two shirt at the club. I don't know why that would have happened. Maybe that's me just spamming the auto button and didn't think the game would do that. But um, yeah, somehow he has been assigned number two and we might have to change that. So we still want to proceed with the tactical changes after the goal. Of course, we have now got some fresh legs on the pitch and poor Eintracht are now getting swamped. We've hit the post up. Meccano has hit the post from a header. It's a good free kick swung in and he hit the post and the ball's put out of play. Looking at the stats there just as they were coming up. So that's another great save by their goalkeeper. Armini was looking for a debut goal as well. Forsberg swings the corner in. Adams is chasing the ball, but the clip cuts off. So, yeah, looking at the stats here, we've had 15 shots with nine on target, which is quite impressive. Uh, possession, counter and XG are both excellent too. So. This really is a good introduction to the team. And there is Yusuf Paulson coming off the bench, making an instant impact. If we could have substitutions like that every single game in this series, I would chuckle to myself because it doesn't always happen that way. But that is a brilliant finish. He's hit that right-footed off the inside of the post. Goalkeeper, no chance that high up. And that's a fantastic finish. 6-0, 10 minutes left. Probably should take our foot off the gas and let poor Eintracht have a breather, but no. It's the first game of a new save, and you really want to lay your marker down. So we're going to keep going, attacking, attacking, attacking. And there is Forsberg coming in from the left wing for a tap-in. Places it well, and we are 7-0 up with 10 minutes left. Angelino does well to find Subalai. Nice little bit of interplay there with Paulson. And as soon as it comes through to Forsberg, he's in on goal. And he hits it hard and low. And the goalkeeper had no chance. Now got a free kick that Forsberg plays in. And Subalai has actually missed. That's something that hasn't happened so far in the game. Everything he's touched has turned to goals. And he headers over the bar. So with two minutes left on the clock. Goalkeeper lumps it forwards, play all the way back to Galaxy. Armini's getting the touch. And are we going to attack or are we going to go for the corner? Subaloy to Forsberg. Forsberg's in and he rounds off the route to make it 8-0. And this is some way to make an impact as manager of Leipzig. I know that they're a team that aren't even in our division or the division below or probably the division below that. But what do you want? When you take over a club, you want to come in and convincingly route somebody. And an 8-0 win is exactly the way that we have done it. If you have a look at the stats, 20 shots, 12 on target. Next year, 4.5. We scored 8 goals. At 67% of possession, 8 corners. And an average rating for the team of 7.91. Lazaro scored on debut. Subloy scored a hat-trick. It's been a fantastic first game in charge of Red Bull Leipzig. And we are going to move forwards. To the next game, which is going to be a bit more competitive when we play Mines in the Bundesliga. Okay, so the second match of this episode is going to be against FC Mines, and it is our Bundesliga debut. The lineup we are going to put out for the game is Galaxi in goal, Nets at left back, Orban, Upamakano, Mukiele at right back, Haidara in the middle with Kluivert, Olmo, Sabalai, and Sabitza on the right wing, and we have Lazaro continuing up front. In the Bundesliga. So let's see how we get on. So we are off and running in our Bundesliga debut against FC Mainz. Fingers crossed we get off to a quick start. 
got Nets here making a throw in. Gets to Cliver, who was shrugged off the ball quite easily. But it comes out to Mucky Ailey, who plays the ball over the top. And it goes straight through to the goalkeeper. He then lumps it forwards and Nets wins ahead of well. It's quite impressive because he's not the tallest of players at all. But that comes to nothing as Cliver loses the ball out on the left wing. Now chasing the ball around a little bit as Mines are doing some decent keep ball routines. However, Olmo doesn't like that. Nicks the ball off them and Clivo is going to run at them. A ball to the back post and there is Marcel Sabitzer to score the first goal of Die Rotten Ball. And our Bundesliga campaign. Sorry, I got distracted there by the replay. You can see Clivo does well to get into the box. And Sabitzer is at the back post to tuck that away and give us a nice early lead after seven minutes. Hopefully this will be the pattern of play as Mucky Ailey throws the ball in. Can't get the long throw going. Goalkeeper comes out and claims it. From ball over the top, it's intercepted. Sabitzer spreads it out to Cliver, who's doing the damage. Goes to ground. That could have been a penalty there. Not even looked at by VAR or anything. Uh, play on anyway. Ball comes back out to Sabitzer. Beats his man. He's running past people for fun. Marcel Sabitzer, take a bow. What a finish that is. He has literally just destroyed the defence on his own. As Olmo plays the ball into space, he runs on. Goes towards the byline, gets inside one player and then goes back across. Hits it left footed into the far corner and Marcel Sabitzer is running the show in our first Bundesliga game. We now have a free kick and up Meccano, strangely, was over it. Plays the ball to Nets. Cliver into the box, tries the cross, can't get it across though. And then Nets pumps it forwards and we've got to defend here. Nets just gets runs past. Got back though, he's quite quick. And then gives a penalty away. <laughs> or is it a penalty? They're going to have a look at this one at VAR. Hopefully like ours, this one won't count because Clover clearly went down and was clearly brought down. But ref said no. And then when we look at this one, they have also reversed this decision as well. So a bit of justice there. And Luca Nets can breathe a sigh of relief. And what's going to happen here? Oh, the referee was, oh, uh, yeah. Uh. Oh, okay, so it wasn't a penalty, but it was a free kick. So just outside of the area. It's a bit confused there because it looked like he was going to go and book the player for simulation. Instead, he went back and booked Luca Nets, who was stood in a group of players in the middle of the field. A bit strange how that had worked there. <laughs> but we're back on the attack now with Mookie Ailey. He's got the ball, plays it to Haidara. Ball into the box. Here's Cliver. Should have scored from there, really. Goalkeeper makes a great save. And we have a corner. From this corner, Olmo is going to swing it in. Doesn't really find anybody. Comes back to him for a second chance. And he couldn't beat the first man either. Haidara now picks it up. And he's going to try the cross. And that's dealt with well by the defenders. And all of a sudden, they're looking to get in behind. But Galaxy comes out from his area and deals with it well. So again, Mokieli with the big long throw. Not very accurate with these long throws. Might have to be something that we look at. And we have been split apart there. That was... Uh, Quality piece of play from Mines. They got the ball and just with one pass in behind. And Robert Quazen, no, Robin Quazen even, has scored against us to give Mines a chance in this game with their first shot on target, as usual. But we're going to try and build our own attack here. Luca Nets not finding anybody out on the wing there, trying to switch the play with the diagonal ball. And then the ball over the top. Orban to Sabitza. Sabala is in behind, just powers past players. He's a player that I don't really have a lot of experience of. I've seen him in a few Champions League games and obviously I've heard the name before because it's so unique. But um, watching him in this game, he really is a, a, a solid player who, if he is young, he's going to develop hopefully into a world beater for us and we're going to try and get that out of him. He has a quick turn of foot can beat players with ease as we've got a bit of a look there Barriero scores an own goal to give us a 3-1 lead Olmo with the cross up Meccano hits with the header it actually hits the bar comes down and hits him on the back and goes into the net so that's a bit of breathing space what we're going to do then is wait for this free kick and another header that's been saved we're going to make a few substitutions. We're going to bring on Tyler Adams, who is a solid central midfielder, an American who we did a player spotlight on, and he turns into a brilliant player in this game. I can only keep saying brilliant because that really is how he turns out. 
going to put Solaf on up front, and we are going to bring Emil Forsberg on on the left to give Cliver a bit of a rest. So 65 minutes on the clock, and we have a 3-1 lead. We are, we're doing really well in terms of the game. 14 shots, 6 on target, with an XG of 2.12. We scored 3 goals, so outperforming there. And in terms of possession, we are dominating the game. We're having 60% of the ball. Mine seem quite happy to just sit back and defend and try and stop us scoring any more. And I think that's a tactic that is going to work. And yes, that's it. So, last game of the episode and we get a 3-1 win on our Bundesliga debut. Nothing else you could ask for, really. Marcel Sabitzer ran the show from the right wing. This squad is really going to be a fun squad to manage. I'm really looking forward to what happens in the rest of the season. It might be a bit early for us to be pushing against Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund, but hopefully if the players that we buy develop into the players that we know they can develop into, we will be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. That's a wrap for this episode. We have come out of it with two wins from two games and a great way to start our brand new save. As ever, if you're looking forward to seeing more of what's to come from Red Bull Leipzig and myself, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all of the videos as they come out. Hit the thumbs up button to help the channel out. It's greatly appreciated. And until the next episode, a big thank you for watching. Take care. I'll see you soon.